A selfless person is someone who volunteers his service without any selfish motive or without expecting to be served in return. Hello viewers, welcome to NABN, your community TV station. My name is Nate Martin and I'm your host. There are many people out there doing extraordinary things in our ordinary world. Some call them heroes, but we at NABN TV, we call them selfless people. One example is Ivy Ekotedem. Her story is an extraordinary story in our ordinary world. Ivy is a compassionate and selfless woman who has been uplifting lives and helping those downtrodden in our society. So who is Ivy Ekotedem? Please join us as we explore Ivy's life and her work in our society. Abi Ikotidem is a selfless woman who gives hope to the hopeless and inspires the downtrodden of our society. <laughs> Guided by the belief that compassion has no boundaries, religion, or ethnicity, Abi's focus is to reach each community with love and kindness. She strives to bring desperately needed items to the poor, sick, needy, and the forgotten, especially underprivileged children by providing them with basic necessities to improve their lives. We are lucky today to have in our community a woman named Ivy. Ivy, can you throw a hand up for us? Woo! Ivy is another inspiration for us. She, originally from Nigeria, Nigeria, she's made Flemington her home. In Nigeria, there are over two million people that are internally displaced due to extremist violence and terrorism. And IB goes to Nigeria, collects goods for them, necessities, and brings them to them. So she collects things like underwear and sanitary napkins and pencils, and she personally delivers them to the refugees and the refugee camps. When she goes there to deliver them, she does something else very radical, she listens. She sits down and she eats with them and she listens. Inspired by her parents, Abby learned how to give back at a tender age. Um, giving back to the community is like a second nature. Of, it's like um, an everyday thing to me because I grew up in a household where my father um, was very generous. He was really, really kind. It didn't matter where you came from or who you were. My father would always take me in. Uh, my house was always filled up and his generosity went across borders because he built one of the only schools in my area, in my local government area, where most indigents graduated from. So coming from that background, I realized that his, his generosity had dropped off of me, and um, I would always give when, whenever there was need. In her quest to give more to the poor and the needy, Abby, with some friends, formed a not-for-profit organization called Hope Store Foundation an organization noted for lifting and mending broken lives. Hope's Door Foundation provides desperately needed personal hygiene supplies, prenatal vitamins, school supplies, and food to the victims of insurgency in northeast Nigeria. Something needed to be done for the ones that have been displaced, the children, the orphans that are now orphans, they have fled from the debris, they are all over. What is the government doing about it? So that was what really moved me to to my first initiative, which was the Hope for Borno. Also let them know that people care, that they, they were not alone, that even though I'm not a Northerner, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not even from that state, I'm a Christian, I don't live in Nigeria, I live here. I just wanted to convey that message, to give them hope, to let them know that they were not alone. Pencils of Hope. Hope Store Foundation encourages the education of orphaned and underprivileged children throughout Nigeria by providing them with school supplies. More than 6,000 children have benefited from Pencils of Hope initiative. I have two school systems that have supported me in New Jersey um, that, I part, that are part of uh, this initiative. The students raise pencils every single year. It gives me thousands and thousands of pencils so that I'm able to distribute to the children. So last year, we gave 6,000 children pencils. Today, I'm so proud to say that about 10,000 children have pencils. We've put pencils in their hands. I went, I went to different orphanages and I give them pencils. Students, um, sick children in the hospitals, I give them backpacks and school supplies. One time she asked me if I happened to have any pencils to take to the children in the orphanages in Nigeria. And I said, yeah, I've got hundreds of pencils. I have five children 
and they bring home pencils from school all the time. We don't do candy and cupcakes at my school anymore, so every holiday, every birthday, any occasion, they bring home 20 pencils. And I said, yeah, we've got pencils, and to us, to my kids, this is a, a disposable, a throwaway item. They don't even care about them. We put the word out to a bunch of friends. We immediately collected several hundred pencils. We gave them to Ivy. It seemed like no big deal to us at all. It was something very easy. And like I said, it was something that we almost considered a throwaway item in our society here in New Jersey. The nice thing about that very first experience was it wasn't that we just sent these pencils off to somewhere to the great unknown with wishes that they're going to the right place. And I said to my kids, I mean, it was such a, a teachable moment for them. I said, do you guys get excited when you get a pencil at school? And they don't. But to these children, it made a, such a difference in their life. And I think that inspired my kids and then all the kids in our community that we shared these pictures with so that they also could have teachable moments of what a difference a small item a nothing item to them met in the life of a child halfway around the world and yet a pencil is so in insignificant but yet it is what people can write down their thoughts um, um, but for them to draw especially in the situations where, where she serves. The children that I served um, were well cared for. They were well fed, um, but, um, but to have something in which that you could do artwork, something that you could put down your thoughts, those are the kinds of things that have changed the world throughout history, is the ability to um, put your thoughts down on the open. So to me, your initiative goes beyond <laughs> just giving a pencil, and I just thank you. Thank you. <laughs> love Meal. Hope's Door Foundation also involves in The Love Meal, which focuses on feeding the poor, needy, orphaned, and the poor people affected by a devastating disease called leprosy. The Love Meal is very, very close to my heart. I know that um, a lot of people um, don't understand it. I came from a very big home, and Christmas was a time of merriment, and it's still a time of merriment. But Christmas can also be a time of sadness for somebody who does not have a family. So what I do is that every December, I go back home, and I feed. I feed the leopards. I just sit down there. I feed them. I feed um, orphanages. So uh, for the first year, this, uh, this past, uh, 2015 was our first year. In 2015, we were able to feed 700 people. But this past December, it went beyond. We were able to feed close to 2,000 people. Hope Store Foundation also provides funds for the medical costs and treatment of poverty-stricken children at the teaching hospital Uyo, a Kwai Bom state in Nigeria. From the teaching hospital Uyo, uh, I ran into this baby today, and uh, what is his name? Testimony. Testimony. Testimony is a premature baby. Testimony has been discharged, as you can see. Um, but there's no money to release testimony. And how much is the bill? 16. Only 16,000 naira. Two months, two months, two months after being discharged. Premature. This is a premature baby. Two months after discharging. And this baby has been stuck here in this hospital. Only for 16,000 naira. So, congratulations, you're going to go home. This is it. So is she going to be discharged? That's going to be discharged. She's going to pay the money and she's going to be discharged now. So the mother gave birth, the mother gave a died at childbirth, giving birth to triplets. And after she died, the father took the three babies to the orphanage. They are only three months old. And in the orphanage, one of them died. Now we have these two here. And they have brought them, they felt sick in the orphanage, and the orphanage sent them to this hospital. And who did they send to accompany them? Another orphan who is standing right here. Oh. And today is Christmas. Now, do you know how much their bills is? Have they been discharged? They just brought them in. So they just brought these children in and their bills are going to pile up. These children are starting a life, their life in an orphanage without a mother, without a father who cannot take care of them and has abandoned them. And this child here is also an orphan who has been sent to come and sit down here with them. Where is her food? Do you have food? Who feeds you? So, do you give them, are you going to be giving them food? 
so they, they provide so they, so they don't have they don't have food these children don't have food the orphanage is depending on the generosity of people like you at the leprosy center in akwai bomb in nigeria hope store led by abby provides specially made shoes medication and food for the abandoned children of the parents at the center clinic yeah yes ma'am. and the clinic has nothing nothing we don't have anything. the windows are all broken yes that's very special and everything there is disadvantaged no, nothing is working here except the chest and the, what they used to examine their eyes is what still working and then you have so what is the government really doing about this well we don't know what our government has not been responsive to i don't promise for the past 16 years they have been promising us and they will do something it's only people like you that comes in and have a uh, humane, humane heart i will do something to help uh, at least ameliorate the situation so I'm just actually really concerned about the schools, the classes. For you to have 75 children in a class that has barely no seats, barely no windows, just very dirty and dusty. And then somebody can plant a building, there are no chairs for them. Nobody is interested. So your oldest child in this facility is how old? The oldest child, you no, know, some of them has graduated to secondary school. We have people. So, but the fact it, of the matter it, is that they never, some of them have never left this They have never left this house. The oldest is 20 years. They are 20 years has never seen a Kwaibu. Kwaibu outside, yeah. Why? Because there's no facility for them to even to take them out. There's, Nothing there's also it. stigma. They are stigma. When they go, they will be stigmatized. And, and because of the that, they remain they here. Remain here. So I take the leprosy center very personally. So I have been, um, I've served them for the past three years. They have children. The children have not been able to leave the premises, some of them since they were born. In fact, all of them. They are stuck in the premises. They don't leave the premises. So what I have, Hope Store Foundation has done for these children is that every year I go back and I give them a year's worth of school supplies with backpack. For the men who are deformed, who are not able to walk, I, make, I pay for specially made shoes for them. In fact, last year, I was blessed enough to get into the factory and make shoes for them. It was a day of service for me that meant a whole lot, knowing that I was able to personally make those shoes so that one leopard can feel comfortable walking. So that, to me, is very personal. I give them clothes. I give them food every single time. At the moment, my project with them is that I want, I'm hoping to be able to um, renovate their shoe, give them a shoe factory, so that they are not just able to make shoes for themselves, but they can also make shoes for other people within the state, so that it, it gives them a means of livelihood. They can also um, they can have some kind of form of work. They can hire themselves. People can come from all over the states and around neighboring states because the leprosy center houses other leopards that are not from the state. So because they are abandoned, there is so much need. They, are, they don't have, you know, I don't know if you know a lot about leprosy. Leprosy, they, most of them has issues with eyesight as well. Their clinic is so terrible. The schools, the classrooms are so terrible. So I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to go back and give them a chairs, tables in their classes. Um, give them, make sure that every child stays in school so that they can actually leave that premises one day, go back and then come back and be able to share their story and know that their condition does not label, does not define them. Most of the, cho the children don't have leprosy, but they have not been able to leave the premises. They are stuck. They are abandoned in that premises. They are all there. They marry each other. And then there's a woman there who also had leprosy, even though hers is in remission. She's, the, she's one of the teachers there, and she makes sure that she teaches the children to stay in school. So, um, so I work hand in hand with them to be able to help them. But we, our celebration is just 
around these four walls of Peter. We don't have any way to go. And so when we see strangers like you, far away, United States, thinking about us, we know that God is also thinking about us. Amen. And that is why when we see you, we are so happy. You can see the joy in our in our faces that we are happy. And of course you can see our children cracking these pencils because once in a while you only see it. You've not been seeing it. In the primary school where we are now, we the teachers at times contribute some money so that we can buy them um, stationaries so that we can use in the school that the the books, the pencil and the pills that you're buying for, you are giving them now. But today you have come to give hope to the hopeless. Amen. We say God bless you. Amen. Today you have come to put smiles on our faces and we say thank you. Um, if outside the people who are in America or United States would have been thinking the way you are thinking, I think that the sky would have been our beginning point. But they just forgot about us. But thank God for you. God continue to bless you. Amen. God, that even in our disability, there is an ability. You know. I think I'm solely, I'm one of the luckiest people alive, luckiest woman alive to have an amazing family. I have an amazing family who loves me unconditionally, uh, who, who holds me up. I have a community of friends, I have a community of people who embrace me, who love what I do, who encourages me, who sees me for who I am. Some of them don't even see my skin. And with that kind of community, with that kind of love, why can't I give back to my community? Why can't I give back to humanity? So that is what I live my life for. And I always say to people that uh, it doesn't matter the number of times you go to church. It doesn't matter the number of times you read your Bible. It doesn't matter the number of times you pray. What matters is what you do for somebody who doesn't look like you. What you do for somebody whose skin is not like your skin, who's going through something. For somebody who is not even able or slightly close to paying you back. I always say, let your religion, let your action be your religion. Let your action speak your religion. Born in Nigeria, West Africa, graduated from University of Maiduguri, Ibi is a selfless woman, a role model, a giver, a woman full of compassion, a woman who would go the extra mile to put a smile on the faces of those rejected and abandoned by society. Mandy Hale says, and I quote, there is nothing more beautiful than someone who goes out of their way to make life beautiful for others. Abby and her organization Hope Store Foundation has made life more beautiful and gives hope to those abandoned by society. My name is Ugo Chukunwokoro, the Deputy Mayor of the City of Newark, New Jersey, and currently the Chairperson of NABN TV Advisory Board. As the Chairperson of NABN Advisory Board, myself and the members of the, of the Advisory Board have met and have recommended to the Board of Directors of NABN TV to induct Ms. Ibe in the uh, Hall of Selfless Leaders of NABN TV. In honoring Abby and her organization, Hope Store Foundation for a job well done, NABN TV Board of Directors agreed unanimously and approved Abby to be inducted to NABN TV Hall of Selfless Leaders. Ivy and her organization, Hope's Door Foundation, have been nominated by the NABN Board of Directors, Advisory Board, and Editorial Review Board for a special award slated for next year. NABN-TV will continue to recognize the work of extraordinary people in our ordinary world.
If you know someone or an organization who has made or is making life meaningful for others and you think they deserve to be honored, then please send us an email at nabntv at gmail.com or you can visit our website at www.nabntv.com. We can also be reached at 1-877-7-NABNTV. That's 1-877-762-2688. We'd like to thank all our sponsors for making it happen. On behalf of our producer, Moses Adedeji, our executive producer, Joy Adedeji, the entire board of directors, advisory board, and editorial review board, my name is Nate Martin. Until next time, thank you for watching.